less than a month, but in, if they are done, then I would want to do that. The boxes are here on my front step. Today and like my reaction to that. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. <gasps> also saves you tons of time because you can scan. And how can I turn this into a career so that I can live every day like a life that I'm excited about and, and do a job that I love. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to the first video in my series. So you want to start a business in 2020. I actually don't know yet what the series name will be. That's just a tentative name. So leave your requests below for what you think this business building series should be called. But basically I wanted to do a video series about how you guys can start an online business in 2020. In 2019, I was able to start my business by creating my first product, the Dream Achieve workbook and I do have some videos on specifically my journey like what decisions I had to make what I chose to do those videos I uploaded mainly in the summer around the launch and I will make sure to link them in the cards and in the description box so you guys can go back and watch those if you want to know more specifically about my journey but this video series is going to give you just the skeleton the outline basics of what you need to do to start your own business and so there's gonna be five episodes this one is the introduction you know, figuring out your idea, the first steps. The next episode is going to be the whole setup aspect. So figuring out trademarks or getting a business license, setting up a website and Instagram, all of those details. The third episode is going to be about product-based businesses. And in that video, I'm actually gonna have a video chat interview with a fellow, 20 year old entrepreneur. She started her business in college. So I think that will be a great interview to learn about how to set up a product-based business or boutique. And then the fourth episode is going to be about service-based businesses. And I will have another interview for that video. Hint, hint, she's another YouTuber. And then the fifth episode is going to be all about the launch and how to scale your business and grow from there. So this is all gonna be throughout January and they will probably go into February as well. I haven't figured out the exact timing yet, but I'm really excited for this series and I hope it's gonna be super helpful for you guys. So whether you have a business idea or you just want to get more into the business side or figure out more in your career, be ready for more opportunities, this first tip is to grow your network. What I mean by this is you are wanting to build your network, especially if you're still in school, use all the resources you have, whether in high school or college, to build your network, gain connections, meet new people, so that when you A, do have a business idea that you wanna start or just want to excel in your career, get an internship, find a new job, something like that, you have a place to go off of. So of course you can use social media to grow your network, you can use networking platforms, you can go Go to in-person events, you can reach out to professors that you think have a good network and just ask to grab coffee and talk to them about your goals and what you want to achieve. But today I'm actually going to share with you guys a new way, a new app specifically, that you can use to grow your network and it is called Goodwall. This video is sponsored by Goodwall, so thank you Goodwall for reaching out to me. It's so cool to hear about your app and I'm so excited to start using it to build my network as well. So Goodwill is on a mission to become the world leader in engaging and supporting Gen Z talent. So my fellow Gen Zers, this app is for you. It is the next generation community for impact driven students and professionals to connect and discover opportunities. So Goodwill is an inspiring community of over 1 million members in over 150 countries. Basically what you can do on there is craft a personal website to showcase your achievements, skills, and ideas. It's kind of like a digital resume. And then you can build a network of meaningful work life connections based on shared interests or shared location. You can then get inspired, ask questions, chat, just like you would on any normal social media. But the cool thing is this is focused around career and aspirations. You can also discover personalized opportunities from scholarships to courses to internships and jobs. I set up my account and I'm currently going through the process of adding in my achievements and my resume and I put that I'm looking for opportunities or internships in the cities that I want to maybe live in one day. And so if other people on there are going on and they see my profile and they are offering an internship or they know of an internship in one of those cities, we can connect and talk about it. So. 
Yeah, it's basically a little, a digital portfolio in an app. I want to interact with you guys on the app, so go download it. It is free to download. Create your profile and follow me on here. Let's become friends. It's just Hannah Ashton. I will have my profile linked in the description box. I would love for you to give feedback on my achievements and in return, I'll follow you guys and try to give back um, on your achievements as well, as many profiles as I can. Going back to the business side of it, it's a great way to connect and like I said, get real feedback. The second step in this, process is once you start building your network that's great but let's say you have your business idea then you're gonna want to get feedback so what I do is I've done type form surveys before and reached out to you guys actually to give me your feedback on what you feel like is missing in the business world that I'm in so like the stationary personal development productivity niche is where I am so I ask you guys what I think is missing from that that you what do you want to see what colors do you prefer what layouts do you prefer in planners I did all of that before creating the dream achieve workbook and now that I have my product recently I actually did an Instagram story survey so it's a little bit more relaxed than like a type form but if your Instagram is your target market then that is a great market to survey just using the cool features on Instagram stories like the polls or the questions or the Q&A's and just gain their feedback, post some pictures of what you're thinking or kind of explain your idea and get feedback, see if people would actually buy it. Once you have your idea and you figured out how you're going to monetize that, which just means turning an idea for let's say a hobby or something into a way to actually make money from it, whether it's selling the product, whether it's charging for your babysitting, charging for giving guitar lessons, like whatever way you're monetizing your idea. Once you figure that out, that's awesome. You've gotten feedback. Great. It's something that the market wants. Now it's time to begin crafting your brand. So I have done full presentations on personal branding at my events, but I'm gonna give you guys the quick rundown. So to explain to you guys how to set up your personal brand, whether it's for your business or you just wanna have a more put together Instagram, I am going to be using this slide deck that is actually from one of my events about a year and a half ago, my digital success event, which happened in Knoxville. So I am going to walk through my parts of this presentation, most of it at least, and give you an idea of what you need to start curating your personal brand. Brand. What is a personal brand? It is your trademark. It is the person behind the brand. Let's say though you don't want to have a personal brand. This can still apply to your business branding for your business. So who knows the store on the left or yeah, the left of your screen. <laughs> Most likely if you've been in a mall, you know this is an Apple store and you know that from the look of it right away because they have great branding. Tori Birch is another one. Even without seeing her name, we can step into the store and kind of feel um, her vibes. She loves shiny gold decor and bright, colorful, well-made clothing. We get a feel of who she is. And as soon as we step into a store, we can understand that it's a Tory Burch store because of the spot on branding. So now to create your brand, here are the basics you need. You would need a message, an audience, and a theme. And I'm going to break down each of these today. So first is your messaging. An example I have for you is Jenna Kutcher. She is an amazing podcast host of the Gold Digger podcast, but she started off as a wedding photographer in a small town. She then went into being a business podcaster, but even though she has wild success, I think she's number one on Apple Podcasts for women in business podcasting. She still keeps three things in mind in her messaging, whether it's her talking on a podcast, whether her it's her a copy on her website or in her Instagram captions. She still goes back to she is a Midwest small town girl. She preaches body positivity, but also says, you know, she's a mac and cheese lover. That's even in her podcast intro, or at least it used to be. And so you want to make sure that the words you're using, the message you're sending out aligns with your brand. If you are preaching sustainability as a brand, you want that to be a message and, you know, being good for the environment, but then you have a ton of extra packaging and plastic associated with your business, with your product, people may not take that so seriously. So think back to what you want your message to be and how is that going to show up in your business? Okay. Okay. Next we have to figure out your audience. So if you've taken any business course, you've probably heard about target market or target audience. And you may have heard someone say to you, if you try to sell to everyone, you're selling to no one. It's so easy to get caught up and be like, oh, my product or my service is for everyone. I want everyone to buy it. Anyone can use it. 
But when it comes to marketing specifically, it's gonna be much easier to make those sales if you're specific in your audience. So for example, my audience for my workbook is college women, and that's the broader, and then I get into their interests and hobbies. So the girls who normally buy my workbook, I'm not saying the guys don't buy it, I've had guys buy it, but the girls who mainly buy my workbook are in college or right out of college. They feel there's a lackluster in their current life. They wanna start a new project or new side hustle or they just want to feel more productive and feel more accomplished with their school routine in their classes and they're very motivated so those are their interests and hobbies the question or problem i'm solving with my product is feeling is time management specifically i think the way i have my planner laid out is a great way to introduce you to time management and productivity if you're just starting out in that realm and so that's what i pride myself on i'm helping college women take back their day by being able to manage their time more be more productive and work on what they love so ask yourself these three questions for your business what is your audiences your target audiences gender and age again maybe it's a product that works for all genders for me though i like you if you go to my website if you go to my instagram i'm targeting women with the feminine colors i'm using with the language i'm using i'm talking like on my website and on my instagram captions like i'm talking to my gal best friends so that's what i mean by gender and for age like i said college so we do a lot of posts relevant to the college season the semester finals all of that kind of thing number two What are your audience's interests and hobbies? If they're gonna buy your products, what else are they doing? If you're creating workout clothes, like a workout line, maybe they also are into eating healthy and drinking water and taking care of themselves, you know, kind of think of those items. And then number three, what question or problem are you solving? This goes back to, is there room on the market for this? And you'll kind of figure this out when you're doing the step I mentioned previously, when you do your surveys and you get feedback on your product or your idea, are you solving a problem? because if you're not solving a problem and you especially if you don't have a big following you're not going to make sales all right and then lastly we have to your theme so this is what's gonna make up the look of your brand hopefully if you guys go to my website or if you think of Hannah Ashton you're thinking of light blues whites a hint of gold maybe blacks feminine but still modern and professional and business minded and so my colors are different shades of blue and white and then also black and gold so I say to pick three colors that are going to be your main colors for your website you can use these in your logo you can use these on your product whatever you want to do but mainly for like marketing wise three colors is great and then pick two fonts there's three different categories of fonts there's sans serif serif and script and there's an example of each on the screen and so figure out which font type reflects your brand reflects that message and connects with your audience and then choose one as your main font and then one as a secondary font then you're going to want to make sure you have consistency so like i said have consistency in your website colors and your website coffee copy which is the text that's on your website so again talking in that tone or that message that you want to be associated with your brand use these in profile pictures videos social media business cards all these places if you want to keep it going here are some more things that you can have to kind of build your business build your brand have a professional main logo a smaller secondary logo a profile photo, a snappy but professionally written bio, a killer about me page, image templates and standard editing routines. So I have a template for Instagram stories. So every time I wanna create a new story, I just uh, upload new pictures, add new texts, that kind of thing for when I wanna promote a video or when I promoted a podcast. Just having templates is gonna make your editing time, your marketing time go by way quicker. Also have branded email templates for your newsletter and then a media and press kit if you want to reach out to publications to talk about you, to feature you, or you want to have sponsors, that's what a media and press kit is for. So here's an example of my brand. Again, this is from a year and a half ago, so the thumbnails are a little bit different than I'm about to show you, but as you can see on the right, that's kind of my mood inspiration board. Dream, Believe, Achieve has always been a motto for my channel. And then here's how my thumbnails from this time and my Instagram pictures um, kind of reflected that. So as you can see, keeping with the bright, happy colors, the blues, the whites, the golds, all of that. 
And that's it for branding, guys. Best of luck to you. I can't wait to see uh, what you come up with and how you're starting to build your businesses around this brand. All right, so that was it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you liked how I switched over to presentation mode and did some things different than I normally do just sitting here talking to you guys. But I hope this was helpful and get excited for episode two of this series where we're gonna go into a deep dive of all the legal aspects and fun, like also some fun aspects of setting up like your Instagram and your website, things like that. Make sure to turn on post notifications and subscribe so you get notified when the next episodes go live. And I would also love to talk about your ideas on Instagram. So you can always DM me, we can chat, comment on my posts, whatever you want to do, or comment on this video what your business idea is, and we can talk through it and just talk about it. I think it'd be a super great way to connect. Okay, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in my next video. Bye! Peace out!